Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here with a Surface Pro 4 review for photographers. You can see my exact model in the links below in the description for this video. The one I'm using has 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 SSD drive, and an i7 Intel Core processor. I went for the Surface Pro 4 ahead of any other laptop just because it's so small and light, so I could take it with me on location without adding too much extra weight. And it also looked powerful enough for me to edit photos in Photoshop. By the way guys, I'm sorry I haven't tested this with Lightroom, so I'm afraid I can't comment on the machine's performance using that particular software. So I'm going to cut right to the chase. I absolutely love this machine. It's not perfect, but if tablets slash laptops like this continue to improve, I'll probably never purchase another conventional laptop again. I mean, look at the size of this thing. I can do the vast majority of things I want to do, like editing photos, watching movies, and it barely adds any weight to my bag. Now, at this stage, I should point out that I am a Mac user, as you can see by this beast here, and my wife uses a MacBook Pro, and usually with reviews like this, Mac users will complain about Windows usability in the comment section below. But I'm afraid those criticisms are less and less relevant nowadays. Microsoft have created a far more user-friendly operating system than previous versions of Windows, and it works beautifully in touch mode too. Interestingly enough, I've experienced more crashes with my iMac and Adobe software than I have on my Surface Pro 4. I'm still a fan of the Mac operating system, but I think Windows 10 is now a great alternative, and I've got no problem using that instead. So what exactly do I love about this particular machine? Well, as I mentioned, Windows 10 is great to use, and the pen that comes with the Surface Pro is very smooth. When we combine the two, it's just a really enjoyable experience. Sometimes I even find myself doodling and making sketches just for fun. The build feels good, the kickstand gives me a range of positions to choose from, and the keyboard's quite nice to use as well. In terms of performance in Photoshop, why don't we have a quick look? So how well does the Surface Pro 4 perform in Photoshop? Well, let's first of all look to see how quickly Photoshop opens up. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. And as we can see, it opened up pretty quickly. And that's even with my screen capture software here, which will be taking up some of the resources. So what about positioning the Surface Pro 4? How natural does it feel and how well does the pen work? Well, I can choose different angles. So for example, I can actually bring the kicks down all the way down and I can just draw on it like this and I can rest my hand on the screen and it doesn't cause any problems. It's only looking for the pen when I'm using the pen and I can still keep the keyboard connected so I can access shortcuts. If not, if I just want to use it like a normal laptop, I have a little Microsoft Bluetooth mouse, which you can also see a link to in the description of this video and it works extremely well. So what about how smooth the drawing process is? Well, let's just create a new document in Photoshop and make that nice and big. I'm going to choose a brush and I can just draw smoothly in Photoshop and there is no lag. Now, the larger the brush and the more intensive the workflow that you're working on, you might actually see a little bit of a lag there and it might grow as the workflow gets bigger and the file gets bigger. But honestly, I haven't noticed much of a difference there. The other great thing is if I choose to detach the keyboard, I can still have access to lots of different shortcuts because I purchased this piece of software which is called Tablet Pro. I can't remember how much I purchased it for. I'm sorry, I couldn't find my original purchase. But I've set up a load of shortcuts that make things easier and if we just combine that with Raya Pro, I have pretty much everything I need without my keyboard here. So I can still use Photoshop very quickly and conveniently. For example, with Tablet Pro, I have this area here where I can increase the brush size if I choose to. I can just run my finger along it and that makes the brush size bigger or smaller. I can make the screen slightly bigger by pressing Tab and make the document bigger by pressing Full or I can put it back to normal. I have lots of different options, so I don't need the keyboard all the time when I'm working on the tablet. Now, what about a full exposure blending workflow? So here's a workflow that I created earlier on. I'm gonna get rid of Tablet Pro because we've got the keyboard attached, and I'm gonna show you the layers panel. So we've got quite a few layers here. We're working in 16 bits, and I'm gonna open up the contrast zones that you can see here. 
and I'm also working with smart objects. So the file in total is about three gigabytes, which is quite a large file. We're starting to use, or we have to use PSBs here instead of PSD files. Now, how quickly does Surface Pro 4 function with a file this big in Photoshop? Well, let's open up Raya Pro. We can go to Enhance, Enhancements, and we can choose, let's say, Shadows. And we're going to dodge the shadows. And that's loaded up relatively quickly. We can bring along the mid-tones. And you see there's a slight delay there with the preview. And we can bring along the highlights. And we're just really trying to affect the darkest shadows here. And so I'm going to press OK. So now that we've created the dodge and burn layer, I'm going to choose the brush, make sure my foreground's set to white, and I'm going to choose an opacity of 20%. And now I'm just going to paint in some of the shadows just to brighten some of those areas up. There we go. And you can see there isn't too much lag, even though we're working in a pretty big file. Now, don't get me wrong, the Surface Pro is far from perfect. You will experience lag with bigger files, especially when working with things like panoramas, for example. Now, let's quickly look at a different example here. So this is another image I created on the Surface Pro 4. And on this particular image, we have a huge amount of layers, and it's another massive file, about three and a half to four gigabytes. Above that, if we look at the channels palette, we haven't got any luminosity masks. So why don't we see how quickly we can create these luminosity masks? And bear in mind, we are still recording the screen using a screen capture software, which does take up some of the resources in the computer. So I would recommend when you use Surface Pro 4 uh, with Photoshop that you don't have any other programs running. So it can just concentrate on this one program. Now I'm going to go down to luminosity masks and I'm just going to choose create all. And we can see how quickly the luminosity masks are created. And that's done. So if we go to the channels palette, we can see all of our luminosity masks. And we can delete them as well now. Now, what if I just want to draw on it? Some people have complained about there being some lag when we paint on larger files. So if we go to the layers tab, and I just create a new layer on here, and I choose the right brush size, set the foreground to black, and I the opacity to 100. There we go, I'm drawing along, and I'm experiencing a tiny lag, if at all. Now I'm sure the larger the brush, the more lag, and the larger the file, the more lag, but it's not too bad. One of the issues when working with the Surface Pro 4 is that the computer tends to get a bit hot. Now right now I'm feeling the back of the tablet, and it's definitely warm, it's not cold. So it is working, but not so much that the fans are on. It's making no noise from the Surface Pro 4 right now. So it seems to handle these larger files in Photoshop quite well. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't use the Surface Pro 4 as my sole machine, unless I was traveling around and I had no choice. I would have a bigger machine that can handle larger images and larger workflows much more easily. And I'd use the Surface Pro for when I'm on the road. If I use this all the time, I think it's going to very quickly slow down because we have smallish hard drives here and we're obviously going to be using up more of the resources. There still seems to be a long way to go for these machines to be brilliant, but in Photoshop right now, I've had no problems whatsoever. It seems to function beautifully. So all that's good and well, but what about the downsides of this machine? Well, the battery is pretty useless. I can get a maximum of two hours use out of it in Photoshop. But then again, should we expect more? With the size of this machine and the amount of work it's being asked to do, I think it's pretty impressive. With less demand and tasks, naturally the battery lasts a little bit longer. I could have gone for the Surface Book, which boasts a very respectable battery life, but I didn't want the extra weight, and I don't mind plugging in the Surface Pro 4 when I'm in some place like a coffee shop, for example. There's also no SD slot, so you need an external SD reader to access your photos. Next, it's extremely expensive. At about £1,700 or $1,600, we're talking Apple prices now, and that doesn't even include the keyboard. Another problem is that when you buy the Surface Pro, you need to update everything instantly. Microsoft had a huge amount of problems when it was first released, and if you don't update all of the software as soon as you get it, you might come out with some problems. I had a few problems myself, but they've all been fixed with the updates. And finally, the machine, despite its decent specs, will not perform as quickly as a laptop with the same specifications. Since this little thing is tightly encased, it tends to get a bit hot, which means the performance is throttled 
to keep the temperature down. But as we saw earlier, the machine works well with Photoshop and doesn't overheat. But I doubt it would handle very difficult video editing. But despite all of that, this is still a great little machine. And if for whatever reason I decide to upgrade to a full laptop, I doubt I'll be looking at MacBook Pros. Chances are I'll go for the next generation of Surface Books if the specs are good enough. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the review. And if you'd like to see more photography related videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.